Today on Rat and Cat, lost person behavior applied and an unnerving discovery while searching for missing caver Christopher Zitzowitz. Day two of the 2018 search for Christopher Zitzowitz, who went missing in 2013 in the big lava bed, Skamania County, Washington. And uh, I, today I just want to cover ground as much as I can in the next four, four hours or so. I'm hoping to cover four to six miles in a triangle shape. I want to go straight out towards the volcano in the center of the lava bed and then uh, east and then back here to our vehicle and I was late reading in uh, Lost Person Behavior, the book Lost Person Behavior uh, last night, how cavers are a lot like hunters and uh, Zitzwitz was uh, looking for a cave, he wasn't actually in a cave but that's what he why he was out here but uh, cavers will tend to uh, be like hunters and that they'll just when they're in the lost they'll just go and go and go it's kind of a pride thing that you want to find your way out and you're good at, at you want to feel good about where you're going and, and so you just keep going trying to look for a way until it gets dark and then you look for shelter and in that storm epic epic storm um it just it was turning from rain heavy heavy rain to heavy heavy snow and so that would be uh probably a fatal decision if he weren't prepared, which I believe he didn't have uh, shelter, proper shelter or clothing or maybe even fire to stay overnight. So, um, yeah, so the other thing is, is that cavers are more likely to leave marks uh, uh, on trees, uh, build rock cairns, which are those little piles of rocks that you see sometimes big to mark a path. So I'm gonna uh, keep an eye out for marks. I'm gonna take some photos with my drone to crowdsource for you guys to look uh, for yourself, look for any signs of anything that's unnatural. Uh, and so hopefully we can see something. It's a needle in a haystack scenario still, uh, trying to find somebody like this, especially the, after this time period, because uh, we're looking for basically bones, uh, bicycle helmet, possibly shoes. Um, so, about to head out. Rat and Cat viewer Cherokee Weaver commented on my previous search video that most missing people are found out in the open and not in some hole or den, which I've been showing a lot of, and I've been talking a lot about, uh, terminal burrowing, one of the final stages of hypothermia. And I have to admit, he's right. Most people are not found uh, in a terminal burrowing situation. Statistics for lost hikers in temperate mountain areas show that 25% of hikers were found near a linear object, such as trails, roads, power lines, pipelines, etc. 14% were found in fields, 13% in structures like buildings or vehicles, 12% in drainages, 8% near water, 7% in the woods, 4% on rocks, 3% in scrub, and 2% in brush. With zits with those prime discover areas, such as roads, structures, and drainages, have already been searched. That leaves us with forest, rocks, brush, and scrub. What's very unusual about this area is that there are thousands and thousands of small rock overhangs and caves which make easy natural shelters. Also, Zitzowitz was a caver looking for a cave. Most importantly, we want to increase the POD or probability of detection. If I don't look in every cave and hole I come across, my search is less thorough and I'm likely to find less evidence. 
That's why you see me looking in so many caves and crevices. So if you come across an area where there's a bunch of tiny overhangs or small overhangs that somebody could crawl into, and what I've noticed is there's these shelves in the lava bed that are like this, where there's a lot more of these shelves. And then there's just open areas that are flat, full of bonsais, just a little bit. In case you're wondering what happens to your mylar balloons, there's where they go. What happened next is probably one of the most unnerving experiences I've had yet in the big lava bed. Oh, that was wild. <laughs> 